Hey, you're watching Just Bones 95 so here's some screenshots from the diorama you'll see in this video. Stay tuned, be sure to drop a comment and subscribe if you'd like seeing more of these. What's up guys, so not a lot of diorama videos on this channel, but uh, it's definitely time. Now, if you guys watched the Mezco 112 Vapor Review, you would have seen this and the bottom. This is going to sit there, I do got to flatten it some, so because right now it's kind of like, it leans a good bit, but it'll be right there. So we did our gray, we did our graffiti, we did our silver cardboard, and cut out a little template and sprayed to get our little blue, blue and black outline skull there. We got some little splatter left on the door for weathering effects. If you remember, I was gonna do just bones and then decided against it and decided to do the just because I didn't want to take away the gray. I wanted to leave some of that. Gonna do some black wash here, down at the bottom, some more up here on the corners. Because I did a little too much and then went to wipe it off. Yeah, you can tell the back of the foam is not painted. But mainly, this video, I want to uh, just start getting some of this together. Mainly going to be doing the bottom here. So, yeah, talking about our foam here. So, as you can see, just a square, normal foam board. Um, it is a little bold or the center, but wait. And I think we can probably fix that by cutting a slit in the back. Like when you cut it and you press it, kind of gives it that weird bowl thing. As you can tell, I started to do some little weathering here. I had the crack, um, the holes for the magnets. Got a little scratch there, which I'm gonna kind of do some cutting and stuff on that. But for starters, first thing that we're gonna wanna do to this is take our bulb foil. You've probably seen this on a lot of videos. And look, there's, so there's no texture. I mean, there, the foam does have some texture, but not really. So just randomly rolling it around, applying different pressure. And what I'm doing here, I'm getting close to this line, but I'm not going to press on this line a lot. I'm going to go pretty light on that line because it will kind of change the line a little bit. And I want there to be clean lines. So basically it looks like they just took the concrete and dropped it in. And then maybe near the line, we'll just kind of give it these little dabs here, different parts of the... So now you can tell, so I pressed really hard right in through here. We have our cracks. Now I want to go through and add a little bit more detail. We have some scratches and stuff going in through here. So now what I want to do is take, um, I'm going to go get my X-Acto knife. And where we have this crack, I feel like it's still a little random. So I want to actually break away some of the concrete. Uh, I think I'm going to use a sharp new pencil for that, actually. So I ended up getting a semi-sharp pencil to make the lines a little more prominent. And my dial is going to sit this way. What I'm going to do here is go from the crack that's already there. And as of right now, I'm just lightly pressing. I'm going to draw a line, and you can see the cracks come up here. Should start pressing into those lines, exact same line, following it a little further. So now I want to paint it. I'm going to use the center here and shake up our matte white acrylic. And you have to open it first. Yeah, that is a pretty good bit of paint, but it also is going to be absorbent and it's going to dry quick. I'm going to do that. I'm going to mix in my touch of black. We have our apple barrel black. Just 
three of those little drops in there probably you already buy gray paint that works great um i like to do this a little cheaper and just mix my own you just have to be careful with it and eventually you learn like how much to mix and not to waste and the best thing you can do really is if you're going to go ahead and do black and gray find other stuff that you know is also going to be gray and just try to do a lot of it at once so you're not wasting what you mix up so i have this little plastic spoon thing here it's literally just a super tiny spoon um it come with one of those little jellyfish lights the little dancing jellyfish lights it's like so you can put your soap and water in there and kind of mix it up to get the air bubbles and stuff out i guess but you'll mix this up until we end up with our nice gray color and the goal is just to get it all covered so our base has mainly dried so i took a cup of water some black paint i mean you can see how thin it is it just kind of runs down so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna stand it up and i'm gonna very lightly a little test i'm gonna add some more water actually now just right down the center there just get all that excess paint out of our brush Stand this up to let like, gravity do its work. And we'll run the brush back down it. Brush over it again. Over it again. And then very, very lightly. Basically, by leaving the brush really dry after putting on the wash, you'll keep pulling the paint further and further out. Now, at this point, I've added a little bit of brown wash. I'm going to probably go back and do some more black because that stands out a tad more than I wanted it to. And then, like, you know, we definitely don't have very much going on down here. Um, basically, I'm just going to let it dry and keep doing layers like this and um, perfect my wash technique. So I think up here, like, maybe not this square, mainly this one. I think we're definitely getting the right look. Uh, I may do this outside, too, to where it dries quicker. Like, as we're, um, you know, painting. And then I'm going to look up. And I think my wash mixture is the main issue. I think I may have actually had too much water. So I'm going to do some more wash and then go back with the dry brushing and then go in and do my little oil splatches and stuff with this. Yeah, so after playing around with this brush a little bit, like you can tell, I got the smallest bit of black paint and then I'm just kind of wiping it. It's very dry and you see where I did it over here on the edges. Let me show you guys right here where there's not any. Take it. And I mean I'm like just barely dabbing. Okay, here we are. So this is after like me going back and forth like nine million times to try to get a concrete look. And I mean you can tell I'm like my wash is way darker there, but I feel like if I dark it there, it's gonna mess up here. And then my wash kept getting weird here. My lines aren't that prominent anymore. I just kept going back, going back, and going back, and redoing this. And um, yeah, I don't know. Like I'm fairly happy with it. And I feel like from a distance, it does capture like concrete pretty good. Like over in here on camera looks really good. This area I'm not super happy with, but I'm just gonna take my pencil.
run it back through there real quick. I'm trying not to press super hard. Or else that line is just going to get huge. And I mean that decently brings it back. But see when you put the actual one and see it like all together. I think with all the details and stuff being there. It'll actually be pretty good. So let me zoom out real quick. Yeah, so like seeing it all together, I think it'll be fine. I do gotta do gray around the edges and stuff still. Or just black, I don't know. But my glue gun's heating up right now. I'm gonna get the magnets in for the back. And then I have these I made out of wooden dowels. These are gonna be my little light, or not light pose, little um, pose, just thump pose or whatever. So I'm gonna glue both of them down slightly in front of that door. And then I'm actually thinking about to add some detail to take away from some of the concrete and it being so gray and blotchy and ever is actually going through making a tape line and adding the little um you know diagonal lines or whatever yeah so actually that would be easier to do before i glow my pose down but it should be all right and hopefully yellow covers over that pretty good so, um, yeah, they're probably not even exactly the same. Definitely not 100% even. But this whole thing's going to be a weathered, grungy look anyways. And more than likely, if you probably measured all these out and looked in real life, they're probably not super even. So, uh, I mean, they get hit and replaced and freaking beat all the crap and whatever. But I feel like that added a pretty good bit of detail honestly yeah the yellow really pops and I think the yellow on the ground is definitely going to do it some good so I get the silver up here and I may go ahead and add some graffiti on the ground I don't know yet so I applied the first bit of paint but I put blue tape around the outer perimeter to blue tape inner perimeter um, just kind of laid it, let it overlap, took the X-Acto knife and like this piece, you know, overlap here and then I just trimmed it. And I put my first bit of yellow, but I'm going to dab it, let it dry a little bit and then go over it again to make sure there's nothing bleeding through. This yellow is really, really hard to cover or get to cover, especially on this dark gray. But uh, yeah, I'm going to do that and then very, very, caref very carefully untape it. Hopefully it doesn't peel the paint anywhere. And then um, figure out how I'm going to tape to do my horizontal lines. All right, yeah. So uh, just skipped ahead because I wanted to knock out some progress. So finished up my yellow lines. I did have to go back with some gray and touch up. And then I did two black lines. Uh, I just rolled a little tire through there. Put some paint on the tire, rode a little model car tire through there, and basically that was to give it the, you know, forklift as drove over it. Look, I added the little operation um, mechanism, whatever that the door would roll up into. Even though technically it's back here, I guess it could like kind of roll up and then that way or something. But I sprayed that with some silver paint, which does give it a bunch of texture, and then I just went through and added blacks and browns just give it a more rustic look this is a piece of foam painted textured black and then just the piece of pipe bent it's glued to the wall same with our poles and uh yeah it's just supposed to be like a little light i'm gonna have my light here uh, i'm waiting for the cardboard the paints uh waiting for the cardboard paint like this the silver to dry so I can po put this in there and then I'm just gonna put it up here and glue it maybe probably right there. And then that way there's just a little window. I could do a lower style 
And just so it's like a vent, but I don't know. I feel like it should be higher up. So, yeah, I'm going to do that. But I'm pretty happy with how that's looking. I mean, the ground could use a few little random details. Uh, I'm going to do like half fences to here and then like some chain link or something. But I don't have the stuff to do the chain link yet. And I don't really feel like doing more concrete work at the moment. <laughs> so yeah, that's where I'm at with that. 